tonight on Chin Stock Africa, my guest is Dr. Shayo Ajiboye in Greenville, Texas, in the United States. Shayo is the director of the School of Theology of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, one of the largest African born denominations in the world. And he shares with me about ways the church is finding to be relevant and minister in the midst of the pandemic and the lockdown tonight on Chin Stock Africa. But before we do that, please go ahead and subscribe if you haven't done that yet. Please like this video and leave a comment under and we're sure to reply you. This is Chimstock Africa. From Cape Town to Cairo and from Mogadishu to Dakar, this is Chimstock Africa. Here's your host, Chim Onyibilanma. Hi there, and welcome to this uh, edition of your show. Uh, I have uh, with me today uh, a man who has been on this program before, and uh, he's uh, been, uh, uh, he has brought in content that really helped us. Given the situation we're in with this global pandemic, I've asked uh, Dr. Shayo Ajiboye, who is the head of the Redeemed Christian Church of God Seminary in North America, to join me over Zoom for us to talk about what is going on and how we can best interpret it as children of God, as leaders. Uh, Pastor Shayo, Dr. Shayo, you are welcome to the program. Thank you very much. And uh, it's nice to have you uh, be able to talk with you, even though we are all restricted at home with this pandemic. Yeah, we are. <laughs> how has this, uh, how, how has this has, has affected things where you are? What is, are you on lockdown also there in Texas? Total. Uh, well, not total. You can go to a store to go get food, but that's about it. You are uh, discouraged from going around um, Texas is trying to uh, to lift the lockdown and um, have people, at least some people, go to work and so on and so forth. But it's it's a very interesting era, um, especially in Texas, where we value our um, uh, the average Texas man wants to be out and about, but now you have to stay in the it's good. T tell me, how has this affected? You're obviously the leader of the Re Redeemed Christian Church of God Seminary there, and you are in touch with the pastors around the USA and in North America. How would you say this present situation has affected things for you as uh, your seminary, for example, uh, and the churches in North America? Obviously, we cannot meet one-on-one. -on -one. We cannot meet face I mean, uh, that's what I meant. Mm -hmm. uh, so people are going online. What up that? I am surprised at what has happened. Yeah. Because what has happened is that there seems a new fire. Wow. There seems to be a new awakening. You know, from all over the nation, people are connecting and... Um, sort of emphasizing what is important. So you've seen many, many podcasts, many, many Zoom meetings, many, many invitations to discuss what is critical. So uh, the silo that has been in the past where you corner, I am in my corner, don't come near me, the silos have sort of broken down. Amazing what the Lord does in a time like this. I'm talking about in the job course. I mean, there are intensives we want to do as a seminary. We can't because people cannot come to campus. But even in class, I am talking about my class, and um, I do get report from the other classes. In my classes, it's like there's a new presence 
of the power of the spirit of Christ. Amazing. It's like there is a new openness and a new willingness to embrace the things that are important for me. Um, I am thanking God for the lockdown. Wow. Wow. And that's a really maybe, good way. To... Maybe, the, maybe the only thing that, you know, that I am praying that we should see is that what is happening with us as a people should flow into the community. And some people are doing it. I mean, I had a, have a video which I can share with you of one of my brothers in Houston serving the community. Amazing. And I was so touched. People, the cars lined up. You know, you know, we used, we, Redeemed Christian Church of God, we, we are proud of the fact that God causes us to have large crowds. In this particular video, the crowd in cars that came to collect food and the amount of food they were distributing to the community. I'm like, Lord, I honor you for what you're doing. These people stepped out and, and then the same thing happened in one of our major churches in Dallas. And then the same thing happened. So our people are stepping out. The senior pastor for my own region just invited people that if you don't have mask, come to the, uh, what you would call the headquarter church, but even though we don't use that terminology, come to the, to the regional center. We have provided mask. Come and take mask from the regional center. For me, those, and it doesn't matter who you are, you know, if you come, you will be given. Wow. You know, wow. so I, I am so grateful that the Spirit of God seems to be moving over His people in this time in, in, tech, in the rest of the U.S. states. I mean, that is, for me, that is, uh, that is uh, it's such an exciting testimony. Tells me already the fact that the church is seizing the opportunity because one of the questions I had for you was to ask how best we can make use of the opportunity uh, that is before us. And you're already lining up that. But before I come to that, let me ask this. How do you interpret this time, my brother? How do you, I know you're a thinker, you're an intercessor, you're a man who loves to walk in the prophetic, in the real sense of it. How do you interpret this time? Or how do you think the church should be interpreting this time? Oh, what, do think, uh, what do you think God is saying to us? My brother, strange times. <laughs> <laughs> Very strange times. When we are talking prophetically, I believe that the enemy would like to fast track God's timing. And God is like, my timing is my timing. You stay out of this. So I, I believe that, you know, if the enemy would have his way, he would, you know, he would bring to pass what is planned before its time. So prophetically, we have to resist that. <laughs> we have to resist that. I, 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 I don't believe it is God's time for certain things uh, which are planned to happen, which will happen to happen yet. You know, for instance, you know, this issue of one world government, everybody across the face of the earth doing the same thing, you know, and, you know, and so on and so forth, and every other thing that is attached to it, you know. I, I believe that, by intercession, we can chip into that and break that stronghold. Now, please hear me and hear me very well. I am not, I am not a, a sort of, um, I'm not, I'm not limiting the biological. I'm not, 
I'm not in any way questioning the scientific. I'm not saying, oh, this uh, virus is not there, uh, and so on and so forth. The virus is there. The virus is real. People are being impacted. We need to be wise. We need to take all the precaution. We, I, for instance, I don't go out unless I have to, because community infection is now more prevalent than one-on-one -on -one infection. So you just have to be to be to to listen to God and know where you need to go and don't go where you are not supposed to go. Because if you have the virus, it becomes challenging, you know. So I stay at home. I do my exercise when it, as it is um, <laughs> the way I, I, I can manage it. Well, I, you don't jump around in this kind of a situation as some people have observed quarantine is biblical. <laughs> <laughs> so stay in place and don't we don't question the biological what we question is an attempt by a group to now ride on the back of the natural to begin to implement unrighteous decrees if i understand you very well you are saying that uh, what is happening is happening, but what we need to pray about is who gains out of it. That uh, right now, it is possible for people and agents to take advantage of this period to execute things that are not meant for now. And through our intercession, we should be praying that God's will, only his will will be done during this time. Am I correct? Amen and amen. People and agents are working hard to take advantage of what is happening now to fulfill their own intentions. Some of them for, for financial goals. They want to turn the people of God into meat, into bread. And they would take advantage of what we have now to turn us into money-making proposition. I hear you. So my question that I will ask them would be this. I would say, don't you, what do you think? Because you can't but pray that God's will will be done and that uh, we will make the most of this opportunity. As the children of God, what should we be making of this situation? How do we profit of this present situation? I think you started alluding to it before, but because you can't, it's a, it's a war. Darkness will not consult with light before it takes opportunity. And light must, light must not wait for darkness before it moves. We are not reacting. We are stepping in to take ground. How do we take ground as the children of God and as the church now? Not even after the lockdown, but presently now. What do you think we should be doing apart from the prayer? We must go back to the basics. We must go back to the basics. Preach the gospel. Be instant in season, out of season, no better time than this to find a means to reach out to your community. Because your community, they are feeling the need to be engaged. They, they need help. And we can reach out to those that surround us. For, for instance, my wife, she has the skill to, to sow. All of a sudden, from all over the nation, people are asking, oh, can you send us masks? And she has to, oh, I can only do so much. <laughs> and somebody would say, oh, send us a hundred masks. No, I am just one woman who is trying is our best to be a blessing to our community. We all can find something to do that will uh, glorify the name of God and give us an opportunity to say to people that Jesus is Lord, even in the midst of all of this. So we should look to how to touch lives through good works and the gospel. Actively, we must look for how to touch life through good works. 
the a lady in the store beside my house where my wife gets groceries you know she saw one of the masks that my wife made and she said oh how did you get this special mask of course because it's not the common one so and my wife said oh i can make it for you so my wife made the mask for her and guess who went to deliver it not my wife my daughter went to deliver it an opportunity to expand our options mm. in the preaching of gospel. gospel you know so of course my wife could have gone to deliver it but for whatever reason between herself and my daughter and, and my daughter was very insistent let me go deliver this let me go deliver this so the mother said okay you go deliver it and there is an opportunity for interface with our community because of a mask yeah where are we preaching the gospel yeah and people we maybe have not been able to reach before we're able to reach them now and then exactly. you know, i'm even thinking that in other areas where there is such lockdown where you can't even uh, meet socially we have uh, we have means by all kinds of social media by which we chat with our friends our neighbors as parents in our school uh, it's time to actively preach the gospel. Let me take you to another question, Pastor Shayo. You are involved in the church. You're a pastor, leader of a seminary. The church is closed down in most parts. There is no, most people are not able to continually give as they used to give. People can't gather, especially the small churches. What do you think will change after this lockdown? What, what kind of shifts do you see coming for the church? For the church, we go back to the basics, as I said earlier on. You know, when we started, Brother Chin, did we, you know, all of these things that surround us now, did we have them? We didn't have them. But the fire of God made a difference and gave us all of these things. If we go back to that fire of God, whatever God has given us, God will sustain. Amen. So if I have a big facility, I don't need to be afraid and be worrying. If I am truly preaching the gospel, and I'm truly impacting my people, I told you about two of my brothers in one in houston one in dallas who's who have huge churches what did they turn their church into a means of blessing the community you think the community will forget mm. you think the members of a church that is blessing the community will not be appreciative of course they will be appreciative and when they are appreciative they are going to ask pastor what can we do in this particular season of corona i have found an increase in enrollment in my wow. seminary wow wow people are coming to learn mm. why because we are engaging people are asking how can we serve you see go back to the basic we go back to what is important to the church mm. we go back to do go into other world and be agents of the good news. Jesus loves you. You know, as basic as it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is changes the world. You know the song they taught us as children, Jesus loved me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. <laughs> it is the gospel. And the world needs to hear it. Mm. And when we as the church are defined by that then we don't have problem with resources mm. you know but like i said the plan of the enemy to us to nuclearize i believe that we will survive it yeah i believe that the day will come when we will gather again yeah that's you know, my conviction yeah you know so um Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm, if I'm taking too much time. No, 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 but, please go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. <laughs> I believe that the day will come when we will gather again, so yeah. I'm sorry. 
what we must do now is create the platform for great rejoicing. Yes, yes. When we finally gather together and we see each other, and I can bring one person that is not there and bring another. Yesterday, a woman who could not afford to pay was begging my wife, how can I too come to the Bible college? I said, wow. tell her to come as an auditor. <laughs> You know, what, I'm, what I'm hearing from you, actually, I'm hearing you say something like, uh, uh, you know, that scripture that says that a time of shaking is coming when God will shake everything and only those things that cannot be shaken will stand. That in the yes. end, we, ha we have nothing to fear that only those things that can be shaken will be shaken. We have to go back to the basics. And if after this whole system, some things don't stand again, some of our structures are no longer there, it doesn't matter as long as we can hold on to the basic which is the gospel we have been giving. Uh, we shouldn't be afraid of some, some shifts away, some things evaporating, some things closing down. If they have to go, that means they can be shaken. And only the things that cannot be shaken will stand. And God wants us to go back to the basic. And uh, I, I seem to be hearing you that. But you know that people have been concerned, especially about Africa. And I know your heart for Africa, and I want to end with this. Especially the fact that... Uh, with us adopting the same system of lockdown, we have uh, poverty-stricken poverty stricken areas where there is fear that if this continues for a while, people might just start revolting. There have been areas already where people are looting because of just not having any means of income. What, 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 do, you, what do you say to this? Well, um, you, you know, it's sad to... to Oh, you you pressed a very sensitive button for me. I'm you sorry, know? but I want us to speak to the church because it's an opportunity for the church to. So I want us to speak I, to the church. I, I feel emotional about the fact that our own written messages from all over, from all over Nigeria, from Liberia, uh, from um, our brethren, they are hungry. You know, in Africa, most people um, have money enough for a day or for yes. three days. And, and that's it. They must go out and work to get more money, to get more money, especially those in the cities. Those Do you see this as an opportunity for the church? Do you see this as an opportunity for the church? Great opportunity. Great opportunity. We that have must to step out to engage the brethren that I do not have. For instance, one of my brothers, you know, called me yesterday. No, day before yesterday. One of our pastors, actually a very, what you call, successful pastor brother, called me and said, Pastor Shayo, I'm hearing things about Kano. I know you're on the ground in the north. What can I do? And I said, good our brethren, all they need is food. Mm. Food. Period. Food. Mm. They're hungry. They're, they're hungry. That there are people inside Kano City that have been forsaken by their family. Actually, their family catches them. They will kill them. This honor killing thing. So they belong to us. And, and they're there. And you know, so what are we going to do? Are we going to just sit down and say, okay, let's wait this out. By the time we finish waiting it out, those people will be in amazing danger. Now, having said that, we all must, what my brother do, did yesterday or day before yesterday, he reached out. He said, Pastor Shayo, I know that you know people on the ground. I don't know them. He said, how can I reach them? And immediately, I told him about some of our discipleship centers, some of our brethren, and so on and so forth, who are there on the ground. Five minutes, he wired me a huge sum of money and said, please, make sure it gets to the brethren. Let's step out. Let's reach out. 10,000 naira, 5,000 naira. I don't know how much that is. Say it in dollars. Say it in dollars. We all know U U.S. dollars. 
US dollars, $25, $10, $5. Make a huge difference. Make a massive difference in the life of somebody. So what you're saying, what you're saying essentially is that we all should see this as an opportunity, not just not an opportunity for uh, not opportunity for some group of people for my little contribution. We must yeah. see it like I can do something. And I own in, in our own little group, yes. you know, five dollars here, ten dollars there. Five dollars there, according to our evaluation of the need. We are not rich, like you call Dangote or Rand uh, 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 or gold mine rich. God has given us as stewards. We are willing to. That was saying a few days ago. He said, a lot of you are asking me that the Geo is a general overseer of Redeemed Christian Church of God. He said, a lot of you are asking me, how can you give me money so that I can use it to feed the people? He said, don't ask me that. You go and find people around I you them. and the little resources you have, feed them just like I also am taking the little resources that I have and I'm using it to bless the people that surround me. That's what we must do. We must become the church mm. where everyone has no lack. Wow. That is very powerful. And this gives every one of us an opportunity. I can help my neighbor and I can meet the need near me. And in meeting that need, we're extending the reach of the church. You know, I, I got a word from the Lord before we went into this lockdown. And God was similarly telling me that, this will come as a time of harvest for the church if we manage it very well. Amen. Just like what you are saying, we, we go into a time of trouble, but we come out of it with like treasures out of darkness. That scripture was the scripture that the Amen. Lord will give us treasures out of darkness. We're going through a time of uncertainty, a time of great darkness, but if we manage it well, we'll come out of it with a lot of treasure. And I think this managing it well is what you pointed out, the place of intercession so that we pray that no other forces of power will be able to you shop what God is doing. Secondly, the place of compassion, being able to look at and help people. And the very critical third thing is the place of preaching the gospel, which you are so carefully highlighted. I want to round this up here, but I want to give it back to you and say, is there something on your heart that you love to say to our brethren all across Africa and maybe other people in other parts of the world who might watch this on YouTube? You know, God will get our back. There is a father out there who is concerned about his family, a mother who is concerned about his daughters and sons. I want to encourage you that somehow God will reach you. Love Lord your God with all your heart, with all your might. And somehow God will send your neighbor to you. So, you know, instead of worrying, because a lot of people are scared, especially in Africa. Mm. A lot of our brethren, if you see this and you're watching it and you're scared and you're saying, what, what's the next thing? Number one, stay safe. Don't expose yourself to medical challenges. Then it becomes complicated. Stay safe. I tell my girls, please, I mean, my, my teenagers in the house, please, I beg you, don't expose yourself. You know, children, teenagers, they want to go out. They want to go do stuff. Look, we don't need any medical anything right now. But number two, what you have no control over when you take it to the Lord in prayer, somehow God will raise up, look, in my own hometown, you know, my, my, my hometown, I come from a very traditional, traditional Yoruba community. And, you know, really, most of the time I don't deal with them. I engage in that area because... You know, it's two different worlds. You know, 
during this lockdown, Brother uh, Chin, all of a sudden, God gave me an open door. He had a coming to me. And how much do I have to give them? I have to give is, is what I cannot afford. And they are not asking for much. You know, some people came to my wife and they said, the widows in the community, they need help. 10,000 naira. What is that? We can afford that. Uh, if one of your old uncles, oh, I am sick, I no longer work, and I owe 5,000 naira. Mm. One says, oh, I have all this lockdown, I start uh, poultry now because of the lockdown. I don't go to sell and my birds are dying. 10,000 naira. How much do you need? I need 10,000 naira. Ah, now, these are in my primer family that I'm telling you about. Well, what's that? I can afford that. You know, God will raise somebody up that will meet your need. Hmm. You focus on God. Focus on giving thanks for the need to you have. And by the grace of God, I plead with my brethren. I plead with some of us that have a little resources. This is not time to hurt. This is a time to start. You know, a small girl in Jaws, you know, one of my friends told me, he said, I want to bless the community. And when she said the community, I'm thinking Christian, and said, I would like to go out and serve the community. How does she serve the community? A bag of rice, a few, a few um, uh, onion, a few, you know, um, tinned tomato and stuff like that. Give it to family. This teenager, Brother Chin, this teenager, that the last count has impacted, this is what they told me last week, has impacted 60 families. Wow. 60 wow. families. Wow. And all she does is she comes to us her big uncles and say, uncle, I want to impact my community. Of course, you know, uncle would bring out a little money for little niece or little nephew, and she faithfully she goes collect those money, I mean those things, and take the material to the community that needs it. And my brother Ben Osawe, who you know very well, you know, she is, he is just crazy about this girl. He is excited. He said, yes, this is what this is this is what we need the next generation to be doing and he's so excited has become the evangelist or what the girl is doing i am an evangelist for it too because i'm saying it here our children can be a blessing you know teenagers they have the kind of reach that we don't know exists and if we empower them if we encourage them you know, of course, there is a need to pull back sometimes because if my daughters have their way, they'll be out there behaving as if nothing is happening. So I, I pull back, no, 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 you can't do that. Social distancing, da, 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 da. You know, we, we have to keep saying that. But we must release them to be God's agent. And we must release ourselves. Don't say, what I have is small. What is small to you? is huge to the man down the road. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Shayo. Thank you so much. And I, I know it's your heart for the poor, your heart for the, 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 the least and the, the, the ones that have almost nothing that always comes out. And I think this is the opportunity we have as a church to express compassion for those who are most vulnerable. And I think that's the key to the harvest that is coming. So I thank you so much for challenging us on this. And uh, thank you for joining us early in the morning there in Texas, late in the evening here in South Africa. Thank God for technology. <laughs> uh, this is where we'll say bye-bye now. 
God bless you. Thank you, Brother Chief. The Lord bless you. Thank God for the wonderful work you're doing, sir. God bless you. Thank you for supporting us. So this is where we will say bye-bye. And uh, that has been Dr. Shayo Ajiboye, who is the head of the uh, Seminary Institute in Texas for the Redeemed Christian Church of God. And uh, thank you for joining us. We'll take a pause here. Hi there, thanks for watching. What do you think about what you've just watched? I'd like to know. Please leave a comment below and I'll personally respond to you. What do you think about what you've just watched? And do subscribe to this channel. Click on the subscribe button and on the bell button so that you know whenever we come up with new videos, we're coming up with new ones every week, sometimes twice a week. And please share this channel with others. Let them come and be blessed and be edified and be equipped to be a light and a soul. Thank you.